This is the mysterious Ray 17. She is a freelance Chinese illustrator who has remained anonymous online, but her illustrations show a level of mastery that is difficult to put into words. In honor of it being the year of the dragon and recently celebrating Lunar New Year, I wanted to analyze and discover the secrets behind this summer illustration that I have had pinned for over two years. I returned to the first place where I learned about Ray, Pinterest. It is a vast, ever-expanding visual library and the perfect platform to explore visual techniques from artists all around the world. I started by looking for images and simple tutorials that would match Ray's style. There were several step-by-step -step tutorials that match the different elements in this particular illustration. During my visual research, looking for tutorials led to me overanalyzing Ray's summer illustration, and these were the things that I noticed. Ray uses bright, saturated colors that range from pastels to holographic, which makes an iridescent, pearl-like consistency among some of her pieces. She also adds a fun and whimsical dream-like elements too. As far as her techniques, she uses a lot of gradients to create smooth blending between her colors and these are evenly distributed in low contrast lighting. Lastly, she uses dynamic compositions with a mastery of anatomy which all together makes her work a feast for the eyes. This leads me to even more questions. I was really inspired by this YouTuber after watching his video. Could Ray have used software like Unreal Engine to make this illustration? Why did Ray choose this particular character? But let's get back to the study. After studying and looking for tutorials that best fit what I needed, I had a different problem. These tutorials were either in Chinese or Japanese. However, it comes with a really easy solution. Google Translate has a camera function and it was really easy to get multiple different screenshots. Before I started on the final study, I had to understand the basic perspective that Ray used, which involved lining up the different angles and working out the smaller details in the cityscape to save me time in the final piece. For this, I did not use the reference tool that comes in Procreate. It blurs out all of the essential detail in the background, which is what I was focusing on at the time. So I have decided to switch all of my references to VizRef. I found a couple of process photos on Ray's Twitter to use as a guide for what my workflow would be starting this illustration. Following Ray's process photos, she starts with an extremely detailed sketch and that is not something I would normally do. I started with the most difficult part first the cityscape, then the fish statue, spear, the Grand Order character. In my normal workflows, I usually keep the sketch until I paint over it, but in Ray's workflow, it is an integral part to her illustration. For the sketch of the character, I paid special attention to getting the correct flow and energy of her dynamic movements. I really enjoyed the process of sketching out her hair. Loosely following one of my tutorials for this part, I started with flat colors and moved into the details layer by layer. And the reason that I chose this particular tutorial is their use of gradients. It is similar to Ray's workflow. I separated the cityscape by color and distance away from the light source in the foreground, primarily using two blues, then later adding light yellows as the city lights. The lights 
should have been added after the gradients if I followed the tutorial correctly, but the lights helped guide where I would later place the gradients, making this complex background a lot easier. To add to the city environment, I used a mixture of the Tamar and wet sponge brushes on top of the flat colors to create texture and highlight some of the smaller details because every city has an extreme level of detail no matter where you look. It took time to get all of the details across the cityscape. I have learned to manipulate everything with curves and the lasso tool to get it right. The roof and the fish statue were by far my favorite part of this whole illustration. The entire process for creating these elements was so satisfying. I enjoyed adding the subtle highlights to show the fish existing in that city. At this point, I am 16 hours in. The spear and the character followed the same process. Using the lasso tool, I made a precise silhouette matching my sketch and filling it with flat muted colors and then later building on it with shadows and highlights. Ray, in her process, starts with flat colors in the midtone for her characters as a base and then later changes it. Ray's use of gradients saved me a lot of time. I started on the biggest areas first, which were the shadows. I used the lasso tool to get it as precise as possible. And when grouping the flat flat layers together, it was the hair, body, and clothes all separated so that small changes to any of these layers would not affect my base silhouette. I held on to my initial sketch because Ray uses it to define her character. Lion weight makes a huge difference. It is subtle, but noticeable. Notice that the line art is just a lighter, more saturated shade of the rest of the character. This makes the whole art pop and it gives it more vibrance rather than just a plain old black colored line art. I'm gonna skip a couple of steps. We are finally at the finishing touches. I tried to do fireworks once before back in 2020 and it did not look the best. Get ready for a jump scare from my archives. This is what they looked like. For the fireworks, again, I found a tutorial that I could use that matched Ray's style. I used a marker brush for the finer details using yellow as my base color and I switched it to orange later to match Ray's piece. The final step in this illustration is adding on some subtle details with a watercolor paper texture and this is the final result. Following these tutorials drastically cut down on the refining time for this illustration. In the end, Ray's use of gradients and textures led me to becoming a satisfied completionist. It definitely helped me to enjoy the process a lot more because of the steep learning curve. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.